So I'll just kick it off as you can see the, the kind of the subtitle of what we're talking about here today is really about automating and optimizing your inventory. Uh, and those are that can be a very big profit driver for any inventory based company, whether you're a distributor, manufacturer, retailer, doing a lot of e-tailing uh, or any combination of all those environments. Uh, you certainly understand that inventory is a key driver in the business. It's core to what you do. Uh, and so the better you can manage that process and that key asset, uh, then the more we can drive profit and grow the business. And so it, it's really a mission critical function. So as, uh, as was alluded to, our, our focus really here is to think about the two different sides of inventory management. Then we'll break that down into more specifics. So Phil will lead us on a discussion of what's going on with ScanCo and their applications today and then he'll hand it back to me to talk about inventory advisor uh, and the optimization process. And then we'll kind of bring those two together at the tail end and uh, talk about uh, you know, the combined value of these two applications together. And what I thought we would do is just start with a quick uh, quote from one of our joint customers, and we have many, uh, but this is a, a group out of Los Angeles area actually, and, um, and they uh, afforded us a nice quote that, that we've used a few times in, in doing these kinds of presentations. Uh, but as a user of both applications, they see them working together, uh, and I like their word powerful weapon there, uh, to maximize profitability. And so they see these as complementary applications, and, and so we, we thank those folks for, uh, for the endorsement and, and the, uh, the nice quote that, that we've been leveraging here. So when we think about inventory management, as we've kind of uh, just uh, you know, broadly mentioned, a lot of times uh, that topic or that phrase, inventory management, what comes to mind for us first, and maybe you're like this as well, is, is really what I would call the inventory control aspect. We think about the physical product and the transactions around the movement of that physical product, right? We're, we're pick, pack, and ship processes out in the warehouse when we're selling uh, product. Uh, maybe we're in a manufacturing environment, we're assembling and building, we've got bills and materials, and, and we've got routes and, and work orders and so forth. Uh, we're receiving product in the door uh, and, uh, and receiving against those purchase orders and so forth. Uh, a lot of times we're managing those transactions using uh, some automated tools, barcode labeling and so forth to improve accuracy and, and uh, speed and so forth. So that all makes sense, right? And, but at, that's not the only piece of it. So when we think of inventory management, that's one aspect. But the other aspect is what well, sometimes I refer to as the flip side of the, of the inventory management coin is what I would call inventory replenishment. Sometimes you'll hear phrases like demand planning or forecasting or inventory optimization. And they all really kind of refer to the same piece of the puzzle, which is now that I know what I have and where it is, right, that inventory control component has done a great job of telling me what I've got and where it is, it doesn't necessarily tell me if it's the right stuff, right? Do I have the right product at the right levels, at the right place, at the right time? Uh, and that's really the, the other side that the inventory advisor product focuses on, and I'll be talking a little bit more uh, a little bit later. So there we have uh, things like demand planning and forecasting, right? How do I know what my future demand is going to look like? Uh, it helps me place proper uh, what we would even call optimal purchase orders so that I'm buying the right product at the right time uh, and having it come in at exactly the right time to give me the most efficiency in my warehouse and, and but still meet my customer service requirements. And then uh, as you'll see when we talk about inventory advisor, hopefully, you know, a concept of understanding what's most important, right? Prioritizing where I need to spend my time and energy. So the two of those together really is what comprise this overall category or topic of inventory management. And uh, so let's start uh, <clears throat> our discussion in more detail. Uh, I'll, Phil, I'll turn it over to you. I'll stop sharing here. And then I'll turn it over to you to talk to us a little bit more about that first aspect, that physical inventory control component that ScanCo addresses. All right, I think I have the helm. Are you guys seeing the uh, that same slide, how to automate inventory control? Yep, we're good. We're good, thank you. All right, well, well good. My name's Phil, I'm with ScanCo, and uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about mobility, mobility for barcode and inventory control. As you heard, uh, we've already talked about uh, we can tell you what you have and where it is, uh, but there's replenishment information that needs to come from Inventory Advisor. So uh, I'd like to just start out and, and kind of define what mobility is. Um, 
as it sits here, it, it's the mobility for barcode module inside your Sage system. So that is the pathway for our devices and our software to communicate directly uh, with your Sage tables. So that allows us to uh, access real-time inventory levels remotely and in real time. Uh, and if you go down the ScanCo path and add in functionality, ultimately allow you to receive goods, ship goods, and do a lot of different things. Uh, but we'll get there later. I want to start with the mobility for barcode module and what you can do when you get it right out of the gate with a Sage upgrade or a purchase from Sage. All right. Let's see if this works. And we're going to move. All right, so this is what you get and what you can do with the mobility for barcode module. All right, and we're going to stay with that module only. So at a high level, when you, when you purchase this module, you're going to get five licenses of ScanCo counts and five licenses of ScanCo sales. If you want to go further, there's a lot more we can add, but we're going to talk about that right now. So when you're upgrading in 2018 or 2019 and you're purchasing the barcode module, uh, it, it's, it's a purchase inside a Sage. It's a Sage module. It'll come with the package. Okay. And that provides that real time gateway between our software and Sage or a handheld device doing physical counts out on the floor or a sales rep out in the field, uh, creating sales order or checking inventory. All right. Anybody who's on Sage 100, 100 C can get this. It can be added on if it's not already there. A lot of times it's bundled in. Uh, to specific Sage packages based on the probability of maybe a client or a customer adding functionality down the road. If there is no mobility for barcode module, our automation software will not work. So it's the first piece of the puzzle and it can grow from there or it can stay just as that. Uh, this also is compatible with any of our multi-bin uh, solutions. So a lot of times the multi-bin tends to complicate things, uh, but we own and, and write our own multi-bin software. So we have no problem integrating through there. And that's uh, that's been a big concern, but but not anymore. So mobility, all right? You get the bar mo barcode for mobility module, and right out of the gate, you're going to get this ScanCo mobility. This is going to allow you the ability to do physical counts right out the gate. You don't even need a scanning device to do this technically. You can go out on your warehouse floor if all your inventory is entered in the Sage and you can manually go and do a physical count. You won't be able to scan barcodes, but you can enter the item numbers and enter the quantities and do a real-time physical count right out of the gate. All right? With that, you can take pictures, you can assign characteristics and qualities, and you get five of those licenses. So you're able to connect up to five devices and do that right out of the gate with the mobility for barcode module without any other ScanCo software uh, needed. The second part of that, uh, when you have the mobility for barcode module, is going to be ScanCo Sales. This is our in-the-field app for sales reps who can create sales order, adjust sales order, check inventory levels remote. Now, as long as you have uh, internet connection, whether it be through Wi-Fi or cellular data, your information through that handheld is going to be in real time. So when you're adjusting and creating sales orders out in the field, it is putting that right back into Sage. There is no external syncing, none of that stuff. Our, our, our software all communicates directly with the Sage tables because of the barcode module. You get five of these as well. Uh, you can also capture signatures. This is a bit of an enhancement depending on what you're trying to do, uh, but being able to capture signatures out in the field is, is definitely something uh, that we can do. Uh, so with the mobility for barcode module, if you purchase it through Sage or through an upgrade, you're going to get five licenses to do your physical count. It's called ScanCo Counts. That's the mobility. And five licenses for the ScanCo sales. And that's going to be creating and looking over those sales orders out in the field. Uh, there's additional capabilities in each of those. Uh, but, you know, we, for sake of time, we're not going to get into a demonstration. Um, if you want something like that, I'm sure uh, we'd be able to get that set up. This slide here just kind of shows you Sage. Uh, and this is where your mobility for barcode or mobility for barcode module sits, just like all the other uh, modules in Sage. It is a, a Sage module that we wrote, and um, it, it's fully integrated in there. And again, it's the bridge between um, automating transactions 
uh, from the warehouse or shop floor because it's not just for distribution it's also for manufacturing and and whatever else you got going on so that is the mobility for barcode module and what you get with the mobility for barcode module out of the door with an upgrade or purchase of sage now like i said that's step one all right so that's that's baby step you you're starting the process uh, you're starting to feel out how some of this automation works and generally what happens and the reason why this uh, mobility module is 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 bundled in a lot of their packages is once you start to see the capabilities and the efficiencies behind that uh, that real-time data transfer and and that remote um, access people tend generally tend to want more so where do we go from there so the full mobility suite taking things fully mobile you'll see here on the left the first two pieces we've already talked about scanco sales and the scanco mobility right those those are as they we've talked about uh, and and standard with that purchase where that goes is into warehouse automation manufacturing automation and uh, more of a full functional field service capabilities so we build, you know, we, we like building blocks, barcode modules, the first block. And then, you know, depending on what you guys want to do and what you need, where the pain points and where the value is, we add in the different pieces to make sure that we are uh, fulfilling your need and providing value uh, for, for the customer. So why, why do we do this? Um, it, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, uh, the customer demands it. The industry demands it. Uh, they have the Amazon effect where individuals need real time, instantaneous answers. And if you don't know what your inventory levels are and you can't see what you have at a glance or in real time, you can't properly uh, sell or forecast a need. You, you can't keep up with the constant uh, demand and the high turnaround time um, that's demanded of us. So everybody's one click, one button. I want my I want my stuff in 24 hours. Uh, you got to know what you have in order to do that. And if you don't, it's going to take longer, and you're not going to be able to keep up. And, and eventually, uh, things will go south. But uh, automating that increases your efficiency, increases uh, the time you have to create to do other tasks, and allows you to get those items out uh, much quicker. Uh, the industry demands it. Uh, there's a lot of, of validation and certifications and requirements now. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of bigger companies are requiring other companies to barcode and automate specific transactions because they can't afford for these manual errors. They can't afford for these downtimes. So they want your system to be up to speed in real time so they can communicate in with it. And, and everybody knows all the levels are the same. Everybody knows what's going on inside the organization as far as inventory. Uh, this, this goes for production as well. Uh, we, we can't afford downtime looking for parts uh, to complete orders. We need to know exactly where things are and what's going on and how many there are so we can properly validate, yeah, we can ship those 10 out today because I know we have the inventory. You don't want to promise 10 and realize you can only do eight. Uh, and, and they've got to wait on another two. So uh, being able to have that visibility uh, and traceability inside your inventory uh, makes makes the world a difference for manufacturing and distribution. All right, so like I said, uh, it, it, there's, there's a lot of benefits. There's going to be benefits to the shop floor in production as far as efficiencies, tracking labor, uh, issuing parts, keeping up with the inventory that's going on, your distribution, you're going to have real-time inventory levels. You're going to be able to allocate and pre-allocate orders depending on your setup to make sure that you know primary customers get their orders first or however you need it set up. It provides a lot of additional capability uh, to make sure that your inventory is in the right place at the right time. And working with an advisor, inventory advisor is going to tell you how to keep those levels how to keep those levels up to speed and when to make those purchases and forecast uh, a need. So they really work hand in hand uh, to provide real-time inventory accuracy, which is, which is huge. And then also we talked about the sales team. You know, nothing, nothing more frustrating than a sales guy to sell something that might not be there or make some kind of promise or guarantee based on old information. And really any information that's not real-time is old information. A hundred things can happen in an hour to your inventory, and if you don't know what's going on, uh, you might be making promises that you you can't cash in on. All right, 
all this automation comes with a paper trail, not necessarily a paper trail, a digital paper, paper trail, if you were, because uh, we eliminate a lot of paper. But it's going to give you access to, to increased analytics on, on efficiencies throughout the shop floor and the warehouse on, on many different levels. All, every scan is going to be captured. It's going to be time and date stamps. It's going to tell the user. There's additional analytics that can be pulled out of reports based on your specific needs. So it can be as simple or as complicated as you need. And really, the, the, the big deal is accuracy. Yes, we increase speed a lot, and we can cut down on a lot of wasted time, but where we really come into play is that accuracy. We, we have that extra validation. No longer are people going to be scanning, picking, shipping, looking for wrong items in the wrong place. They're going to know exactly where the inventory is, exactly where to go to get it, exactly how many there are, how many are on order, how many have been allocated, how many they need, so on and so forth. So we are eliminating errors. We are eliminating errors when receiving goods, when transferring them, when issuing them to uh, a job, when shipping items out. Uh, if you scan the wrong item, it's not going to let you move any further. If you scan the wrong transaction or try the wrong transaction, it's not going to allow you to go any further. So we eliminate those errors. Uh, so we increase the accuracy and, and take time back from your staff to put to, uh, to better use. Right. So some of the basics, uh, physical count. We, a lot of times I hear so many times people say, oh, we can't really do a physical count because it never makes sense. We can't shut down for that long or we get into it. It takes too long. We lose track. Too many things happen. We scrap it or we have to do it three or four times because the variants can't ever get right. Well, that's all due to human error and timing. So we can reduce that physical count time down 70% and bring the accuracy up a solid 90, 95%. Because whenever you're dealing with people, there's still going to be errors, but we eliminate the majority of those. What does that mean? That means you can get real-time inventory counts, uh, accurate inventory counts. You can do them annually. You can do them by cycle. You can cycle them out uh, because they're accessible and because you can do them with relative ease. You can do them more often. More often, physical counts means a, a, a more accurate inventory, which means better forecasting, better business decision, higher sales, all that good stuff. All right? And being able to do that remotely makes a huge difference. You're not tied to that computer. You're not tied to one person. You can have that information wherever you go. Uh, so you can, you can look in on inventory levels and, and check sales orders, uh, all of that. Uh, from from a handheld device mobily All right, and the, the, the idea is to minimize manual entry Ideally, we want to scan everything Sometimes you have to enter things for a lot of different reasons uh, But our job is to minimize those manual data entry errors, right? And that's just gonna that's just gonna result in in a number of benefits for your organization right but it's not just about speed. Like I said, accuracy is a big part of what we do. So being able to scan in the, the proper items and, and know exactly what you're using and what you're using it for uh, and validating it against whether it be a sales order or a purchase order or a transfer order, you know, all those things are going to guarantee that the right transaction is being completed by the right person at the right time for the right reason. All these little things that can get mixed, mixed up in communication errors or you know, I didn't catch that memo where you told me to put this there and I put it here. The paperwork didn't get back to me, so I didn't know. So I went out to look for it there and it wasn't here. Uh, all those things we're eliminating. And, and those little things add up uh, to, to minutes, hours, days, uh, weeks when it comes down to looking at it uh, throughout the year. And really a big part is making sure we ship out the right items, <clears throat> right? That validation uh, of, of all of those steps all the way till out the door uh, if you're if you're if you're automating more than just the barcode module is going to make sure that we're shipping the right items out so it's a waste of time if you uh, get an order in and you turn it around real quick and get it out within 24 hours but you get the wrong item out you know you've you've made the time but you've missed the boat so we uh, we add those steps in there make sure that the right items are going out and we can add in as many or as few restrictions and permissions to that process as makes sense for your organization. All, right, all this is going to allow you to better forecast what you need, 
you know, you're not going to have to carry uh, a ton of extra inventory just to make sure you don't run out. You know, you'd be surprised at how many organizations now just keep double, triple their inventory on hand just because they're scared that they're going to run out of inventory and not be able to make that order. So uh, there, there's a lot of problems with that depending on your different organization. And those are things that we dig into when we look at uh, adding in some automation services, uh, but reducing that carrying cost uh, and amount of extra safety inventory uh, is, is huge. And that works hand in hand with Inventory Advisor to help you make sure you keep those inventory levels at an optimal uh, position and, and also make sure you know where things are and uh, what you have. Okay, we're going this way. So at the end of the day, it's a, it's a customer satisfaction driven um, industry market you know the customer has all the power they've got the access to information they've got a high demand there is a huge amount of competition out there in the global market space so you have to be able to meet those demands to be able to stay relevant to be able to stay profitable so by eliminating shipping errors and staying in your delivery promise dates and sending out quality products and and being able to sell confidently against your inventory is going to build that trust between you and your customers and that trust is going to spread to other customers and you're going to be an industry leader in your field because you can control your inventory, you can control your replenishments, you can make sure that orders are filled and, and items go out and items are purchased at the right time for the right reasons. So if you've got inventory controlling it, uh, accurately is priority number one. Everything else usually falls after that. All right, we've got a lot. We've got over 3,000 customers using our software. We've we've worked with Sage for 30 years now, and we are an OEM partner, uh, and we write directly into their Sage table. So we have thousands upon thousands of of happy long-term customers. This is uh, a, a customer, a reseller of ours, John Hoyt who sold a lot of our software um, and, you know, endorsed us as, as their, their solution for warehouse and manufacturing automation. For, for us to be endorsed by a reseller and, and be sold uh, singularly by them is, is a pretty big uh, achievement. There's a number of partners that sell our software for the, this automation um, and that's all they sell for this. So, once you automate your inventory, you, you can't go back. And that's why this mobility for barcode module is so cool because you start, you start with it and you start learning the automation, you start to see the value and then you can slowly build onto it, add in more functionality, add in more capabilities. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you've got a modern real-time inventory control and inventory replenishment organization. Right? We work with distributors across the country and manufacturing companies across the com country. As small as $5 million a year, as big as $100 million a year or more. So our solution is scalable and can fit your needs, whether they be complex or simple. Uh, this is our guy Cody over at Goldcrest. And if you ever get a chance to meet him at any of the events, uh, he is a great guy and full of energy. And, and we've done a lot of work with him and he is he is super happy with our software. So this is just another example of, of happy customers who uh, get exactly what they needed, uh, started small, and slowly have developed themselves into a fully automated uh, distribution or manufacturing shop. All right. So that is, I believe, it for me. Yep. I'm going to pass. I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, and I'm going to pass it back. Outstanding. All, All right. right, thank you, you for are good to go. That. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, some good information there, and uh, and I think everybody that's uh, listening to this, whether live or on a, a recorded version of it later in the future, I think probably a lot of people nodding their heads saying, "Yeah, uh, you know, those are issues that we have and that we need to solve or or uh, you know need to address." So. Uh, so that's good stuff. So now let's look. So we started talking about the the two sides of inventory management, and we dove in a little bit more on the first side there with the physical management of the product. 
Uh, now let's come back and, and circle back to this concept of inventory replenishment uh, or inventory optimization uh, as the flip side of that uh, conversation. And so uh, again, also hundreds and hundreds of customers in North America using the Sage Inventory Advisor application uh, with their Sage ERP applications uh, every single day. And uh, what we have found is what we're typically replacing when we sell and install and, and get folks up and running on our app, what we are typically replacing is a spreadsheet. Uh, and we've done uh, full webinars, we've done five uh, part series uh, blog posts on the concept of inventory spreadsheets and, and first of all, why we understand that they tend to be pretty prevalent, but secondly, what's wrong with that picture, right? Where, where are the things that, that cause a lot of issues? Uh, and so we've dug, dug very deeply into some of those topics. We won't do that here today because that's not the focus today, but a couple of quick things just to highlight the challenge of trying to use an inventory spreadsheet to solve this part of the problem. One is just an accuracy issue because I've got to figure out how to extract the data from all these different tables and files within the Sage database. Um, and so uh, I've got to have some technical skill to understand what those data file formats look like, what their field names are called, et cetera. So I've got to do a lot of work technically to figure out what data I need to get uh, out of the uh, application. Then I'll, I'll skip to the third bullet here, the synchronization issue. Then it becomes a timing issue. When do I extract that data? If I come in in the morning, if this is my job in the organization, and if I grab that uh, inventory master file information, uh, and when I first come in at seven in the morning or eight in the morning, whatever that is, and then it takes me a few minutes to get that, I get interrupted, I get a phone call, I go get a cup of coffee, then I download my purchase orders, I get a couple more interruptions, then I download my sales orders. So now it's taken me maybe three hours on the clock to grab all the files, and in the meantime, transactions are happening in the Sage database, and I'm already out of whack, right? There is no way to synchronize that data. Uh, so I've got accuracy and timing issues that become challenging every time I get a changed in uh, environment, I get an upgrade to my Sage application, I get a new version of Excel or whatever spreadsheet I'm using, uh, I now have to kind of re rejigger that a little bit, make sure I've got all the right formulas and, and right file names that things aren't, aren't moving around that way. But I think one of the bigger issues actually is this concept of data control, right? Who is the individual in the organization that manages the spreadsheet <clears throat> and manages all this data flow uh, back and forth and make sure that the uh, spreadsheet formulas are accurate, right? Because a lot of times, certainly we'll get error messages if we have a bad formula, you know, the old circular error messages that we get all the time in Excel, those we can catch, uh, but it's the, it's the ones where we don't actually have a physical error, but I'm getting a wrong calculation that I may not even catch, especially if it streams down to two or three different worksheets as those formulas flow down to one worksheet to another. Uh, I may be three layers in before I discover I've got something that's not making sense and then I've got to trace it back to figure that out. Real challenge just managing that process. And if I'm the one individual that understands all that and manages that, there's a risk factor there for the organization, right? What if I go away, much less vacation or sick time? What if I just leave the organization altogether? And we unfortunately hear that story all the time uh, when we're talking to customers that are, that are implementing Inventory Advisor. Uh, tool. They, they've come to realize that that was a real risk and somebody understood what they were doing, uh, but then they left the organization. Uh, and then, but, but even if you have that figured out, you've got, you've got your risk covered, you've got accuracy and synchronization figured out, you've got that whole thing. The fact is it's still never going to be a best practices model. It's never going to cover all the things that you need to understand. And you're going to have an ever-changing environment with lots of different additional inputs, right? If Again, if I'm doing kitting or bill of materials or any kind of manufacturing, how do I explode my demand down to component levels? Uh, maybe I've got brand new items that don't have any history, and how am I going to forecast those and understand how they behave? And how do I predict that and then manage those a little bit tighter? Um, what if I've added a warehouse or changed a policy or a procedure in the warehouse? Now I've got to go ahead and change all those uh, processes within my spreadsheet as well. So it's, it's, you know, you think you might get it exactly right and it's probably good for about a minute uh, because then that dynamic environment takes over. So just a ton of issues and challenges. And again, we won't dive, we've, we, we could spend hours on it, but that just gives you a feel for the challenges of using a spreadsheet. And what happens uh, when you do that, right? When, when, what are those hidden costs of not using a, uh, a best practices sort of approach? 
And the fact is there's really three key things that we're looking at. One is, and, and Phil mentioned it a little bit earlier, the, the concept of excess inventory. Um, secondly is stocking out of inventory. And third is just the productivity of my buyers and planners and how do I manage this whole process and, and get an optimal PO created. So it, probably the biggest challenge is a stock out, right? That's the worst thing that can happen. And especially again, in this Amazon driven world of expectations that we have today, if I run out of product, uh, I'm liable to have my customer go somewhere else to buy it because they're impatient, right? They have high expectations. And if they have a great experience at a competitor of mine in that transaction, I stand to lose them altogether. If not all at once, gradually over time, all of a sudden I've got uh, customer retention challenges. So the very worst thing that can happen certainly is that I run out of stock and can't meet my customer demands when it presents itself. But I cannot solve that problem simply by buying uh, too much, right? By overbuying to make sure that I never run out because there are serious costs associated with that as well. First of all, I'm tying up all kinds of working capital, uh, essentially gathering dust in the warehouse. And we think about all the different projects that we have that we can't get to for lack of cash, right? We all hear the phrase cash is king. So if we have a challenge uh, cash flow environment in our organization, one of the best places to look is right out in the warehouse where I've got dollar bills essentially stacked up there doing nothing. So if I can manage that excess inventory, get me down to proper levels, uh, I'm gonna free up that cash. But secondly, there's actually hard carrying costs associated with that excess inventory. The rule of thumb out there in industry is, is anywhere from 18 to 20% carrying costs, not only the space that I'm taking up in the warehouse and the rent associated with that, but I've got to pay taxes on it. I've got to pay insurance on it. I'm doing physical counts and moving it around and there's a risk of obsolescence or breakage. Uh, and, uh, and so I've got that shrinkage going on. So there are very real hard costs associated. So just for simple math, let's assume you've got a million dollars worth of inventory. And if you're like most businesses, a good 20% of that is, is in excess status, right? You don't really need it, but it's there because you have no better way of managing it. So that's $200,000 of cash sitting in the warehouse, not doing anything for your business. That's painful. And then if I take another 20% of that, that's $40,000 a year in hard costs, writing a check, money going out the door uh, needlessly. Uh, and what could I be doing with that working capital? What could I be doing with that extra money? And, and if you've got more than a million dollars of inventory, you can, you can extrapolate and do the math for yourself. Think about where you sit in that picture right now. So balancing those two competing interests, having enough but not too much, is a very challenging issue. It's an age-old problem for every inventory-based company. And the reality is most people are trying to solve it with inadequate tools. And, and you know, 10 years ago, maybe that was actually okay. But today, the complexity of the middle market, the small, medium-sized business and their supply chain is every bit as complex as the big guys has always been, right? I've got buying from overseas with long lead times, maybe multiple, maybe some from uh, Asia, maybe some from South America, some from Europe. Uh, I'm selling in an omni-channel environment, all different ways of getting product out. I might be using 3PLs in different parts of the country to give me uh, better distribution around the geography. Uh, so now I have a very complex supply chain and I don't have the proper tools to, try to really manage that. And so that's really what Inventory Advisor and, and, a, and a better best practices approach is all about so that I can get an optimal purchase order. I have to know exactly what I need to buy and when. And if I can help my buyers and planners, whoever that is in my organization, and it's typically somebody that may be wearing two or three hats in the company, if I can make them more productive and get an accurate, absolutely perfect purchase order done in minutes instead of hours and days, Think about what that does for those folks and their organizations uh, to be able to now focus their energies on higher level and really more interesting and more fun things to do. Working with my vendors, tweaking my supply chain, negotiating shipping rates, maybe even going to visit some of my suppliers on occasion because I can actually get out the door and know that systems are running uh, for me uh, on, a, on a regular basis, on a, on a very optimal basis. So there's just so much to be gained by doing this the right way. And that's really what Inventory Advisor is all about, is to help you meet those value propositions, right? Reduce that excess while still reducing my stock outs. And I can do that by getting better forecasting of what my future demand looks like and by smart uh, ordering, right? By optimal purchasing and, and doing that more quickly. And if I can hit those bullet points, if I can drive that activity correctly, I can help but drive more profit from my inventory, which again, that's that's why I'm in business, right? Is to buy and sell inventory smartly and move it and turn it. Uh, and every time I do that, I'm gonna make more money for the organization. 
um, and and grow the business because now I've got cash flowing that I can do other things with it. <clears throat> so so it's all about making better decisions. And the folks at NetStock, the authors of the Sage Inventory Advisor, all come from this background for 10, 20, 30 years in a couple of cases where we've been doing this kind of work for a long time globally for very complex organizations. <clears throat> and when we came together to form NetStock and build the Sage Inventory Advisor application, uh, we knew that there was a better way to do it and that we could bring all that experience and knowledge uh, and domain environment back into a tool that's really designed for the small, medium-sized business, which means deploy it on the cloud, remotely install it so it doesn't cost a ton of money to send consultants out on site and do installations and so forth and make it available on a low subscription model pricing that you can cancel anytime, right? So you can get into the Sage Inventory Advisor application for a very low cost of entry, do it on a monthly basis, and worst case scenario after three, four, five, six months, if you're just not seeing the value that you thought you could, you can cancel and get back out. But I can tell you that that rarely happens. We have less than 1% churn rate, as it's called, cancellation rate uh, of our uh, users. And we have, you know, I think 600 in North America, something like that. Uh, so very low churn rate. I mean, that's, that's really just natural attrition from acquisitions and businesses uh, closing and retiring and those kinds of things. Um, and and you just get a, a much better understanding of your overall flow. And a lot of it is driven from a forecasting engine that's built into the application. Uh, so we make it very easy to use uh, and and so and easy to deploy and rapidly deployed. So I, rather than get into a live demo in the time that we've got left here in our in our session today, I thought I'd just share a couple of screenshots to give you a feel for what we're looking at. So this is an example of the dashboard when you first log in as a user of Inventory Advisor, you're presented with a, a dashboard that is really intuitive, really easy to understand, very consistently designed. As you can see, it's colorful, it's graphical, and it's just really logical the way it's laid out. And we're gonna give you some really key analytics, some key performance indicators that'll, in a snapshot, give you a very good feel for the health of your industry, of your inventory, right? So on the top row on the left, I can see what's my current stock holding. And I can see graphically that that's going down. It's, you know, as I go down to the right, that means over time, that, num that uh, amount of inventory is, is being reduced. That's great. Uh, how much of that inventory <clears throat> is in excess in that middle panel there? So I can see exactly how many items <clears throat> and then what dollar values are in excess and so forth. So every widget or every panel there is formatted exactly the same so that you can get real comfortable with what you're looking at. So I've got uh, underneath that, underneath the bar chart, I have what we call our top five list. So for each one of those categories, which are the top five inventory items in a particular location, right? So this is by warehouse, or I can aggregate multiple warehouses into kind of a virtual view. So you tell us how you want to view your inventory and how you think about it in your organization. Very easy for us to configure that for you. And now I can see exactly which are the biggest offenders or, or problem areas that are creating the, the bulk of my problem. So for example, if I look at my uh, excess stock, I see I've got $7.6 million worth of excess across almost 400 items. Well, I certainly don't have time today to look at 400 items, but I can see my top five represent almost two, uh, over two and a half million dollars of my problem. About a third of my problem is in the, my top five items. I do have time to look at five items today and try to figure out what's going on with those. Do I need to do something, take some action to reduce that excess? Maybe I got another warehouse that's running short and I can transfer it. Maybe I can put it on sale and move it. Maybe I can send some back to my supplier, sell it to a competitor on the other coast who maybe needs this product, but at least now it's visible to me. I can prioritize where I need to take action and I've got some options available to me that just essentially slaps me in the face and says, hey, here's where your problem is. The second row is more oriented towards my customer performance, right? How is my fill rate doing? And I can see that my fill rate has been consistently going up. It's exceeding the target that I have for my items. That's great. Here I'm still stocked out of some items. I've got 228 items that I'm stocked out of. Uh, that's been gradually declining. So that's a good sign, but I've still got potential to lose some $46,000 worth of sales based on our demand for those items and if those customers go elsewhere. So I've got a top five list there. The last column, surplus orders and potential stockouts, is, is really more forward thinking. It's proactive, right? I don't have a problem yet, but I'm about to. So now I can get ahead of the curve. A surplus order is a purchase order that is 
on order, the product's on its way in, and I don't need it yet. So perhaps I can call my supplier and hold off on that shipment, hold it for a week, cancel the order altogether, combine it with another one that's coming in four weeks, something along those lines. I can get ahead of the curve because I've got 61 items coming in uh, that'll add another $2 million almost to my excess problem. Why would I do that to myself, right? Uh, conversely, down below, potential stockouts, product that's still on the shelf, so it's not showing up as a stocked out item yet, but we're predicting you're going to run out before the next replenishment arrives. And I've got some 19 items in that status that could cost me another $40,000 in lost sales. So there I can maybe expedite an order, make sure I've got POs created for those things, uh, and maybe hustle some of them in. Maybe I've got 100 coming and I only need 10 right away that I'm going to be short before the rest of the order comes in. Maybe I uh, air freight 10 of them. So now I've got information at my fingertips with the ability to drill down and drill around and get into the, the, into the weeds with each of these to understand what's happening and take some action. Absolutely uh, a, an invaluable tool and the dashboard is just so easy to navigate. A couple of things that we do in the background that are kind of drivers of that information on the dashboard. One is we do what we call product classification. So we're gonna analyze every item in every location and rate it on an ABC ranking, right? A typical value-based ranking of my items. But I'm also gonna add a second axis, if you will, which is the speed of movement, low, medium, high velocity of movement. And so now I get this nine box color coded matrix that really helps me understand the nature of the items in my inventory. And these guys over here in the upper right hand quadrant that are color coded green, these are high value, fast moving items. These are my bread and butter, my big profit drivers. I wanna make sure that I'm really focusing my attention there, especially if I've got limited time, that's what gets my attention first. So, you know, higher target fill rates, better metrics, closer analysis, do some things relative to that that are different than say the items that are in the lower left, slow moving, low value items. Maybe I question why I even bother stocking some of those, right? Maybe my uh, vendors can manage some of that inventory for me. Or if these are nuts and bolts that I need in my production facility, then maybe I buy those twice a year in bulk and put them in the corner of the warehouse. But the point is I can make some policy decisions and, and have some metrics that relate to the the nature of the items in my inventory, I don't have to paint them all with the same broad brush. And if I just go back quickly to that dashboard, you'll see these color codings here. So this AH and AM, that's my classification. Here's, here's some in blue and red, right? Those are my classifications of those items. So again, even as I'm looking at my top five list, I might prioritize, hey, I'm going after this one. I've got a potential stock out that's color coded green. What's going on with that uh, item in this location, go take a closer look. So the visual cues and the use of color is really intelligent and the application really helps you uh, make good decisions. <clears throat> and then the last thing we'll show you here is just, there's a projection tab that's looking at my forecast. It's understanding what my mins and maxes are over time. It looks like I've got some seasonality built into this item. So my algorithms uh, that predict my future demand understand that. And I can see exactly when I'm buying when the product's received, it depletes over time and so forth. And I'm staying in between those gray bands, which is my min and max levels for this item in this warehouse. So we're looking at that and actually can <clears throat> even produce a table or a report out of that data and send that to my supplier. Say, here's what I'm going to be buying from you over the next year and when I'm going to be playing, uh, placing those purchase orders based on my snapshot of where I sit today. So just a, a ton of information at your fingertips, again, with great drill down, drill around, and very rapidly deployed, very low cost. Uh, it's, it's really literally almost a no-brainer uh, for most inventory businesses, and especially if you're trying to do this with a spreadsheet or some other sort of semi-manual process, uh, it, uh, there's just no way that you'll achieve the results uh, that you could with it with a proper tool. And uh, as Phil indicated, we all get a couple of nice uh, quotes from some of our customers as well. This guy, Mike Ellery, is up in the Rhode Island area, and um, he, he tells the story of, he, it's a kind of a specialty product, and even though he's the president and founder of the company, he really understands the product and his vendors, so he does most of the ordering himself in his small business, uh, and, and by deploying Inventory Advisor, he's cut down his purchase order time, the time he spends putting those POs together from tens hours, I think 20, 30 hours a week, down to just a handful, uh, and uh, he has seen huge benefit from it. Uh, and then we have uh, this other quote from Logan, uh, where we were managed to reduce his inventory by 25%, not at all uncommon, 
uh, but at the same time improve his fill rate and his customer satisfaction. So uh, he certainly saw the value of, uh, of the application that way. So that just gives you a quick high level view of where the inventory advisor application and this concept of optimizing your buying and optimizing that replenishment process is just gonna have a huge impact and the return on investment is off the charts, right? I mean, the math almost seems silly when you start looking at what it costs versus what it's going to save you. <clears throat> and so I think for the last few minutes, Phil, I'll, I'll uh, keep control of the screens here maybe, but I'll just let you maybe start the, and drive the conversation of what happens when we really combine these two, right? We've got a, a, the potential now to take the mobility and the barcoding applications, combine it, and as the quote here, as the line here says, unify that with the inventory advisor, and the benefits are just uh, extreme. Yeah, you know, so what it really comes down to at the end of the day is trust. You know, trust in your inventory levels, trust in your purchasing. You yeah. know, if you trust in your inventory and you trust in what you're bringing in and what you're putting out, you can focus your energies on the other areas that your business requires. So, you know, that's the biggest thing we see is people don't trust their inventory levels. People don't know what they're buying or how much. They're just kind of guessing, hey, we need a lot of this, so let's get that. And then it just sits there for six months because someone ordered way too much because there was a whole other pallet of that stuff in the corner that nobody even knew about. Right. So, right. you know, trust in your inventory is, is huge. So the, they work tandem. You know, if you know what you have, you know what you need. Well, right. I mean, we talk about the, the analytics of the inventory advisor application being so much uh, improved because I've got confidence in the numbers in the inputs, right? I mean, input equals outputs, right? I mean, that's the most age old concept in computing is, is garbage in, garbage out. So if I've got really good quality, accurate information feeding my analysis in inventory advisor, then all those graphs and charts and all that analysis is just going to be that much more accurate and more insightful into what's really going on in the business. That's the ticket. You know, you um, make things simple and strip away all of the uh, the errors and the complexity. And, uh, you know, it, it, it really helps move the business forward, connecting all those dots. You know, it's um, eliminating those and errors coming in and going out is going to slowly over time really laser focus your inventory and your purchasing and, and your ability to do business. You know, and I, I look at these bullet points, uh, Phil, we talk about obviously lower costs, meaning increased profits, right? You're going to sell more because you've got more product to sell. You're, you're meeting your customer demand. You're doing things efficiently, so you're lowering costs. Sometimes we don't think about that last bullet point of less stress. Uh, oh, man, I, I think about that all the time. <laughs> and you and I have, have talked to these folks that manage the warehouse and that do the buying and planning in organizations, and it's almost a thankless job, right? If you're not giving them the right tools, they're going to get screamed at by the by the sales team because they ran out of product, and you're going to get screamed at by the accounting or CFO or, or C-level folks because you've got way too much inventory on the balance sheet, and it's really a thankless job. And so that lack of stress, that stress reduction, really makes a difference for those folks. Yeah, you know, historically, you used to have a lot of time, so you could absorb some of those errors and some of yep. those delays, but now, now everything moves so fast, you can't afford that. So there's a lot of pressure a lot of uh, demand on staffing positions that historically haven't had to deal with that kind of pressure. So yep. you're exactly right. Give them the tools to be successful. You know, take that B player, turn them into an A player, yep. you know, by, by just by just introducing some software that allows them to do their job without having to worry about some of these other unknown issues, you know, accurate data, uh, accurate analytics. And, and it's just going to it's going to make their life a whole lot easier and, and make everything move, uh, run much more smoothly. But, yeah, the stress factor, we deal with that a lot. Everybody we talk to is pulling their hair out, chasing around paper, don't know what's going on, don't know where things yep. are, yep. Uh, don't even know where to start. So that's definitely a big factor here. Yep. And then, then, then we just got a screen here with some real life statistics. Right. These are this is analysis that we've done. Uh, and that others, uh, independent studies have concluded. So, I mean, it's, these are some huge improvements that can be done with a very simple, straightforward approach and just, just getting on top of this. So, again, reduction in inventory, re, uh, improvement in your accuracy, speed and performance. Um, there's just no question that the, the numbers are uh, almost unbelievable, but they're true. 
Yeah, yeah, and and the history shows that these are correct, and it's increasing every year. These stats are going up. You know, uh, more and more people are automating specific uh, transactions inside their business. Uh, it's becoming the standard. So um, these yep. these numbers will tend to increase until you're in the minority if you're not doing it. And <laughs> and this is this is you well, know, and you and know if what your competition then. is right. If, if, you, you, yeah. you mentioned we're in a competitive environment, and uh, right it. now money's flowing, business is booming. Right, the economy is as strong as it's been in a long, long time. It's a great time to be in business. Sooner or later, we're going to have a little bit of a downturn, and the companies that are investing in efficiency now. Uh, are the ones that are going to survive any sort of a downturn. If you if your competitors are doing this and you're not, uh, you're not going to survive the next one. I, I think. Yeah, w- without a doubt. And if you do survive, it's going to be a struggle, and you're going to yeah. be sitting there wishing, oh, we should have done that. But you're right, times are good. So now's the time to, a good time to think to about make making some of those changes. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yep. And, and we're seeing a that, lot of that, which is good. Yep. So I think we'll wrap it up at this point and then open it up for questions, uh, Julie. But just well, I think what we'll do to finish is just kind of come back to that opening quote that we had from these folks at our, at our mutual client at, at Tadeen Urban Tea Company. I think now maybe you maybe better understand what they're talking about when they say that together we form a, a powerful weapon to manage inventory for maximum profitability, right? That, that, that really is a powerful quote. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now at the tail end than it maybe did when we first launched uh, the, the discussion here today. So with that, uh, these are our uh, contact uh, pieces of information. We'll leave this up while Julie, if you let us know if there's any questions we can address in the few minutes that we have left in our session today. Thanks again to Ide Bailey and to all of the attendees uh, for allowing us the opportunity to present our content today. Hopefully you found that helpful. And uh, again, there's our contact information. Feel free to, to reach out directly to us or certainly leverage Julie and her, her team at Ide Bailey to uh, get you any follow-up information as you, that you might desire. Julie, back to you. Wow, guys, thank you so much. That was an awesome webinar. Um, learned an awful lot. Um, came up with some, some pretty good information from you guys and, and kind of opened my eyes a lot as well. So I'm hoping it did the same thing to um, our, our attendees today. Uh, I do see just a, a few questions that um, are around pricing for the modules and for inventory advisor. I know mobility okay. is out there. If you guys just want to kind of take a few minutes and, and kind of explain how that pricing model works, that would be awesome. Sure. Uh, I'll go first, Phil. Yeah. So on the inventory advisor side, it's pretty straightforward. The pricing is two components to it. There's a one-time activation fee, as we call it, which is basically covers all the setup implementation and onboarding uh, that happens, which is very efficient and rapid again. Uh, but that's a $2,250 fee. So always, no matter what your situation, no matter what say GRP you're on or whatever, it's $2,250 one time up front. And then there's a monthly subscription to access the service. And that number fluctuates a little bit based on the size of the inventory. So if you have a million dollars worth of inventory, it's one price. If you have $5 million, it's a little bit higher price. But most of our customers fall into $300, $350 a month range. So again, if you think about freeing up hundreds of thousands of dollars and saving tens of thousands of dollars every year in hard carrying costs, that $300 or $400 a month is a small price to pay. So that's kind of how the inventory advisor is priced. Yeah, and as far as the mobility for barcode piece is a little more complex. It's sold uh, through Sage, so a lot of times it's it's uh, bundled together with other modules. Uh, it, it sometimes it's sold alone, and, and the implementation can vary. So I'm gonna have to uh, defer you to I Bailey uh, to find out where your specific project fits, uh, and they can get you the most accurate pricing. Um, the module itself, if it's just the module, is, is not going to be a ten, twelve thousand dollar purchase. You know, it's going to be bundled in and carry a value anywhere from eighteen to twenty five hundred dollars, and then any other services that might need to be used to get it going um, will have to be determined by the uh, the partner and reseller, and then uh, that that's how you're going to get the most accurate pricing out of us. Awesome, that's great, guys. Hey, just a, a question about implementation with Inventory Advisor. <laughs> Maybe even you can touch a little bit on it. Uh, what is the, sure. what's the uh, implementation process, and how long does it actually take to get Inventory Advisor up and running, Russ? Yeah, uh, it's uh, pretty rapid. Again, it's all done remotely, so the the initial installation and getting the, getting that first dashboard is really a matter of a couple of hours. 
uh, then the bulk of the implementation process is really what we call a refinement process where we need to better understand you know, how many warehouses you have, how you think about your items, is there some grouping that you're doing and so forth that we can manipulate so that we can manage that dashboard. So I think in most cases for a distribution company, maybe with a little bit of light assembly, uh, that's probably a four to six week project at the most. It's maybe 20 or 30 hours of time spread across those weeks. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it, it can go as fast as two weeks. I've seen some installed in two weeks and up and running and placing POs uh, in our system uh, as quickly as two weeks. But I think more typically it's about four, maybe six weeks. If there's manufacturing, full-blown manufacturing involved, maybe it adds another couple of weeks. But within a, a month or two, you are fully featured up and running and placing orders and getting huge benefit very quickly. Well, go ahead, Phil. You have something yeah. Add? and. and as as far as the mobility for barcode is is, is similar uh, but a little different. So yeah, the install takes a couple hours and the training is is pretty short. But it's really a matter of where it fits in your organization. It's usually uh, done in tandem with a uh, Sage upgrade or a purchase of Sage. So um, it depends yep. on where you're at and what you're trying to do. So yep. um, it, it's it's a pretty minimal uh, as far as implementation. Awesome. Hey guys, that's about all I have. I just want to, again, thank you so much. It was a great webinar today. Lots of valuable information. I know myself, I have several clients that are using uh, inventory manager or inventory advisor. And we also have some uh, mobility that we have just recently installed. So everything looks really good. Our clients are liking it and we sure appreciate you guys spending time with us. And those that are on our webinar, thanks for attending. We appreciate you spending the time with us today and we will let everybody go at this time and have a great day. Thanks again, everyone.